Well, good evening, fellow herpers, fellow leopard gecko lovers, Denise and her popcorn, and mm -hmm. what else we got? We have Michael was here first. Okay, Michael, Michael Almani, kind of neck and neck. It was a kind of a tie. Uh, who else we got? We have Norm. Norm, how you doing? Z-Man, how you doing? Yvette, awesome to see all you. Oh, Kyle, how you doing? So good to see you all. Hope you had a good week since last our last operation into the ge leopard gecko world. Um, last week, if you didn't watch it, we had um, Mr. Panita from Bubba's Living Emporium and his special special other Lexi. Uh, this week, we're going to continue where we left off, kind of in the process of going through. Some of some of the original morphs, some of the stuff, the traits and things like that, the back to basics kind of idea. And uh, I think we left off with Murphy Patternless uh, to start this week. Uh, how you doing, Denise? I'm doing. I'm doing. It was a crazy, crazy week, but um, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, eventful happenings over there at the old dog ranch? Well, we, we had a uh, jumping through hoops. We have a dog that's going to be competing in two weeks in Geneva, Switzerland. So we have to go through the USDA process of getting paperwork um, initiated for the health clearance. Um, and unfortunately, in the state of Ohio, there is not a USDA veterinarian who can stamp the paperwork that needs to be stamped so lo and behold it it's been like jumping through hoops to try to get this paperwork done so it was finally sent overnight today so fingers crossed little arthur will go back to <laughs> europe again and um hopefully bring home another win so well that's cool little arthur yeah. little arthur <laughs> it just sounds like a little Frenchy name, like a little <laughs> little Arthur. <laughs> yes. Go Arthur. Go little Arthur. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, his uh, show name is um, Fablehoff Excalibur. So what's uh, the first part? Yeah, that's where Arthur came from. Where? What's the f first part? I heard uh, Excalibur. Um the the kennel name. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Fablehoff is the first prefix and then robable is the second prefix and then uh, excalibur wow yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's quite the name mm -hmm. oh yeah now is this one of the ones owned by the doctor um actually um doctor's partner um and doctor and several other people are kind of in a uh, little uh, co-ownership, so to speak. Um, gotcha. yeah, so he's, uh, he won last year, the juniors, um, edition went on to be best puppy. Um, this is pretty huge. You know, it's a, it's a all Europe show. Uh, it's called the world dog show. And, um, so he gets on his private jet next week and off to Switzerland <laughs> he goes. <laughs> nice. yeah. yeah, exactly. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm in the back of the plane asking for peanuts and <laughs> little Biscoff cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and little Arthur's up front enjoying the the big life, the good uh, life. Yeah. The jet setter. Yeah, exactly. So, anywho, that was my um, brief synopsis of some things during the week. So, and um, okay. I had a great talk with Kyle. Um, on Tuesday from Dragonheart. So I was on there for a couple of hours just talking geckos, gecko setups. Um, whew, all things gecko. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. I hope you all. Hello, uh, RD. Good to see you. That's Tim. 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 Redneck Enki. I believe that's what he established. So anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's been a good week, I think. Um, leopard gecko wise, it's been an interesting week. Um, yep, we've got um, 
I've had a lot of good conversations this week as well. And one of those conversations uh, was with Scott Noble of uh, Noble Family Geckos. And so he's going to come on next week, next Friday. He's taking his, his kid camping this weekend. So, um, but just super, super nice guy. I enjoyed, I enjoyed our conversations and um, our, you know, just the subjects that we talked about, obviously it was like geckos, but other stuff as well. And uh, I have to say, you know, most of the people I've kind of had any contact with in this community in my kind of second go around here has been for the most part has been very good. You know, like I've had some really, I'm very encouraged by, you know, what people are doing and, you know, what people are, you know, where their mindsets at that kind of thing. And so well, I'm pretty excited that he's coming on next week. That'd be awesome. Yeah, he's he seems pretty. He's pretty. He's like pretty down to earth and has kind of almost like that uh, California lifestyle mentality. You know, yeah. it's all good kind of thing. You know, don't sweat it. Blah blah blah, and uh, just super nice guy. And plus, we worked out a deal on some geckos, so we, we well, won't talk you. about that here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you go. <laughs> It was one of those things that Denise and I have these conversations all the time. And uh, it, it's like the other thing. It's like he, he made me a deal I couldn't refuse on one of my favorite animals that he has. So anyway. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that for he, now. He left you an offer you couldn't refuse. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to pass up. <laughs> yeah, it's just hard to pass up. It's one of those things. It's like. When you go to the store and you're only going there for bread or you're only going there for something specific and you come home with $150 worth of stuff, you know, yeah. like that you think you might need or, hey, I could use this or blah, yeah. blah, blah. It's well, like, the Kroger 150. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the, the wild Wheelersburg. Uh, mm, yeehaw. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you're all doing well. And I uh, hope you're enjoying these segments. This is, I believe, um, part five of this series. And Murphy Patternless, I think before we get into the Murphy Patternless, I just, I can't emphasize how understated or underutilized or underappreciated uh, a lot of these, what I'll call OG morphs from back in the day are, I just, I still have a fondness for a lot of these morphs. And when I see them, you know, it, it kind of tugs at the heartstrings a little bit, you know, and, uh, and as we talked about before, I think we brought up Murphy patternless. I don't know if we were off camera or if we were on the show, but they do have a very specific look as babies and it's hard to miss a Murphy pattern list. Like if you had no clue, like nobody told you what it was, but you saw the baby, you, you could be pretty, pretty rest assured that based on the way the babies look that you're looking at a Murphy's pattern. List. Oh yeah. I mean, they, they remind me so much of like baby Swiss cheese. <laughs> when you see yeah. the, the back pattern, the way the little holes and everything just line up so cute. It's baby Swiss cheese. I'm going to see yeah. if there's one in the, yeah, that's a good way to put it. I'm going to see if there's one in Tremper's book here that shows the baby. If not, I got a, I took a few baby pictures that I had from previously back in the 2010s or whatever of some of the, of the baby that I had anyway, or the one that I hatched out. So at least I'll have to, uh, the ability to show what we're talking about here. Let's see. All right. So that's an adult, adult, adult. Adult, adult. Come on, Ron. Adult, adult, adult. You know, to me, like that is like the most unique characteristic of this morph. Absolutely. And there's absolutely no pictures in this book of the baby. Well, that's Zero. pretty sad. Zero. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad I pulled them out because I had a feeling this might happen. Uh, let's see. Let me find them here. Gosh, Adobe changed their Yeah, because soft. there's like no mistaking that morph when you see it when it's hatched. It's like it's like a no-brainer. You know, yeah. you when people go, well, on the forums or a lot of these groups, oh, what morph do I have? And that's <laughs> like, there you go. 
right, share screen. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Baby Swiss cheese all the way. <laughs> I love I love them too because a lot of them have this little weird green patch in the back that goes away as they get older. But they're they're just all crazy looking. They got like two or three different colors going on. They have you know like an almost almost patternless tail or colorless tail. Yep. White behind the head there. Then they have yellow, green, orange, purple, whatever. They just got all kinds of crazy colors going on. But that's just such a cool little pattern for this particular morph. And you and it, and it is the only one that looks like that. You all, know, it's, all, I've had. Um, the last Murphy's Patternless that I just sold a couple of months ago there at that West Virginia show, I had actually one that was born um, striped. Really? Yeah. Not yeah. Swiss cheese? Not Swiss cheese turned totally Murphy's Patternless. And there was two of them in that um, the clutch mates. It, it was the strangest thing I've ever seen. And this is the same animal, just maybe like a week or two later kind of thing. Look how large her eye, the, the iris is. The, oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's that is, cool. I never really noticed that until now. That is oh interesting. My God. You probably sold like the next generation. <laughs> it was rare. It is rare. It's rare. <laughs> Joe, Joe Garcia, Diablo Garcia is in the house. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. Uh, let's see. Let's see if, now yeah. that you've, that's weird that you mentioned that iris because this is the next picture in that series of pictures and it's back down to like normal. Yeah, it must be the way the light was coming in, made the iris or uh, get larger or not enough light, got smaller, you know, like people's eyes. So the pupil dilates. But you cannot mistake, for the most part, you cannot mistake a baby Murphy patternless. They're just so unique and so cool looking. And we've right. talked about this before that there's just some baby geckos you wish would never change. Like, like they would just stay the way they are. Like to me, I absolutely love how Max Snows look when they're babies. I love the black and white, you know, the contrast of the oh, black and white. Yeah, if they would just stay banded like that, wouldn't that be the bomb? That if totally. somebody could create like a Max Snow or another animal that looked like that as an adult, that would be something else. Super cool. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, one more picture of the baby here. Yeah, it was a pretty I mean, when they first came out, I mean, they were like all the rage. Everybody had to have them. And they were calling them leucistics back then. Right. Lucy's. That's right. Yep. And that's how it they were being uh, sold um, as leucistics before this Murphy's quote patternless name uh, came about. Um, we all knew them as leucistics. Yeah. Such a, such a cool little morph. And this is the same animal as like a yearling as a pretty much as an adult. And, you know, they're, they're kind of treated nowadays like the uh, stepsister. You yeah, know? Exactly. You know, it's the redheaded steps. Sorry, redheads out there. It's the redheaded yes. stepsister that nobody wants. Or, you know, I think they're still, I just, I, especially with one of the projects I'm working on, I have, I have a fondness for patternless animals and yeah. I just, I think that's such a nice clean look and uh, I've, and all the Murphy patternless I've ever had, and I've had three, so I haven't had a lot, but um, they've all been super nice geckos too. Like they've been super handleable. They have just been very personable and good breeders. Um, they just all around, all around, uh, like a tank, like they're just, they're bulletproof to me. Like they just, they're a very hardy gecko to me. Right. Yeah. Well, they really uh, weren't, I mean, overly, let's just say genetically abused. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Compared it was too to early in the process to be genetically exactly. abused. Yet. 
people did not take that and just mishmash it down to, you know, just a big mush pot. It, <laughs> it, it was really just, um, it was what it was because you wanted to keep that beautiful little yellow yes. body, you know, with a little orange on the tail. Um, and the same with like the hypo, you know, carrot tails and stuff like that, like the hypo, you know, um, right. when you were breeding for orange tails or you were breeding for, you know, certain attributes where this was not abused the way, you know, half of these other uh, morphs were. That's for sure. Joseph, thank you for posting this show on threads and discord. Appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Um, okay, Murphy panelists. Let's see. Let's see what uh, the, the Trumpers have to say about Murphy panelists. AKA, you know, you're up there and you've got your you're living large when you have an AKA. So if you're ever in a point in your life when you, where you've got an AKA, like also known as, you're doing something. You're doing something right. I wonder so. what I wonder what my AKA would be. But anyway, yeah, we should we should have a show just on AKAs. That would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd be scared to see what it says um anyway roll that like footage. like what's like what's your dragon name or what's your you know, like uh dungeons and dragons like like those calculators you can you know type in your name and stuff and it, it spits out this totally random thing that people seem to believe and they post it on <laughs> facebook and blah 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 and... <laughs> yeah what's my real age <laughs> yeah exactly Okay, so also known as patternless. Well, that's kind of obvious, like patternless. <laughs> right. MP, Patty. I've never called them Patty. I've never heard them called this Patties. I've heard, heard them called Lucy's, like you mentioned earlier, yeah. um, but never, never Patty. But I guess it depends on the circles you're running around with. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Joe says, AKA D Ray. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like super like Star Wars like. Yeah, that's that does. Mm -hmm. AKA Diablo Garcia. <laughs> 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 this gecko hatches with numerous brown, gray, or tan markings over a light colored body. Or you can just insert what Denise said, Swiss cheese right here. Uh the markings disappear by the age of 10 months. Adults lack all pattern ha and have normal colored eyes, which you saw in those first couple pictures. Uh, this migration of pigment cells, a common occurrence in all leopard geckos, creates an animal that goes from spotted to light yellow and then to a uniform gray, black or bronze as an adult. And we've all, at least on this show, we've... Hey, Bubba. We've all we've all seen at least a few variations color wise of the Murphy patternless. Um, the same with you know the blizzards and that kind of stuff. There's quite a range of kind of a ruddy, dirty looking, whatever kind of charcoaly looking gray, yellow. Oh uh, yeah, they're all across the board. Yeah, but the common thread is they do almost, with the exception of her striped one, start out like those pictures like they start out with that little swiss cheese pattern improperly classified as leucistic as a leucistic mutation that name stuck for over 20 years i wonder why lucy's a fun name to say that's all i gotta say I perhaps I one the eye it, it's, it has to do with the eye you know <laughs> right Perhaps one day the first true leucistic leopard geckos with light blue eye will appear. So I'm going to stop there. Has that, Joe or anybody else that if you're watching the show down the road and you're not watching it live, I would be interested if anybody in Europe or Korea or China or whatever, or even the United States has created a true leucistic with the, uh, with a, with a blue eye. Um, Cause I don't know. I have no, I do, do not know. Because this was written a few years ago, so I don't know if something's happened since this book was written. Um, Lord, a lot has happened since this book is written. <laughs> Jeez. The term leucistic has been abolished. Abolished, I tell you. Abolished. <laughs> <laughs> I could hear the gavel falling now. It's been abolished. 
That's your job, Joe. Lucistic. Lucy, you got to make a real Lucy. Not Lucy, like Lucille Ball or Lucy Arnaz, whatever. Just a, you know, we're, you know what we're talking about here. And the res- this recessive shall be called, this sounds like a Monty Python episode, shall be called Murphy Patternless, a.k.a. M.P. People wonder why they shorten words and they, they have all this, like, ebonics and stuff like that where they're just, like, taking words and like throwing consonants together and just, and it's a word kind of thing, you know, like they'll try to pronounce it as a word instead of an acronym or whatever. Getting off the subject. Sorry about that. I go on these little side tangents because my brain just does that. Snow tremper, albino Murphy patternless eclipse, AKA snowflake. Not even going to go there. Snow ember. I like snow ember better. Um, That, you know, that's like a one in a, a, you don't see that. Especially with the eclipse gene, that would be hard to have a patternless animal to me. Um, so I guess that would be kind of special. So does anybody know of anybody that, that breeds these or has these uh, snowflakes or snow embers? So it would be a Tremper albino Murphy patternless eclipse. I've never seen one. I've never seen one either, but... I obviously I've I've not seen everybody's animals, so who well, knows? maybe it just sounded good, and they needed you know a few more <laughs> words to make. <laughs> what else can we throw in the pot here? What can we create while right. we're you know like stir the, <laughs> hey, like the good. like the witches throwing in the frogs' legs and the bat wings and you know that kind of stuff? So hey, you're a snowflake. You're an ember. <laughs> just roll with it. <laughs> That's right. They're rare. Well, actually, these probably would be rare. I mean, <laughs> yeah. for, the, for the actual case that we were always making fun of the term rare and morph market, this would actually probably be one of those cases if somebody had one of these. They could, I would I would let it slide if they used the word rare. Yeah, I would totally give them slack for that. <laughs> Kyle says he has a Murphy pedalist that's albino. I don't think I've ever seen that. See, these Gex has regular ember. Okay. Okay, so since we're on that subject, um, <laughs> Julie, hello, Julie. Hand, hand pinky waving. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. Pink, pink, pinky waving. Why are you pinky waving? Hand pink waving. Maybe yeah, her, is- she has a pink hand that's waving. Oh, oh, oh. oh she forgot some letters there. <laughs> <laughs> but she produces albino babies like crazy huh interesting so what is it what is an ember let's let's go back since since um isn't an ember technical technically a burnt piece of wood <laughs> i knew i could count on you for that explanation I, you are so welcome <laughs> so, that's why they pay me the big bucks to be here Julie says, damn chat won't let me write anything. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you got something on there, so you're able to do something anyway. Oh, okay. maybe that was the description. Let me, I'm curious now, because you said these, these Gex has Ember. Ember Leopard Echo. All right, let's see. Let's see what the old Leopard Gecko Wiki says. The ember is a combination, and you know it's it's rare because in the leopard gecko wiki, it's like one line, and there's no pictures or anything like that. So uh, it says the ember is a combination morph created by Garrick Demeyer of Crested Gecko in 2007. The ember morph is a combination of the Murphy patternless and the raptor. So essentially, a re- an ember is a combination of four recessive traits. Murphy patternless, tremper albino, tremper eclipse, and patternless stripe. The appearance of the ember is a yellow-bodied leopard gecko with solid red eyes. So it, it looks like a to me it like visually would look like a raptor then, like uh, right. Uh, let's, uh, let's see if there's an image here that we can uh, utilize. Of course, leave it to Urban Gecko to have one. Let's see here. You know it. Yeah, it, to me it looks it actually looks like a Murphy patternless with red eyes with the with the snake eyes. 
like eclipse eyes. Um, Can you put that, oh. pop that up? Yeah, I'm trying to oh, okay. stop sharing here. Let's see. Let me try that again. I forgot I was sharing something. <laughs> and I, so I thought you guys were looking at what I was looking at. But let's see. Joe says the Ember, let's see. The Ember should have been the A Raptor. Impatience used the patternless stripe animal in Raptor. Okay. Well, that makes sense. So, um, do, 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 do. so I learned something new. I didn't realize we had embers. So that's an interesting, interesting fact. So let's see here. Do, do, do. Yeah, that's like a needle in a haystack, though, really. Yeah. Let me see if I can find a better picture here. Uh, um, we'll go with John Scarborough's image here. Uh, I can't see the oops. eyeball. Oh yeah, that's true. Sorry, John, we're not going to use yours. Um, let's see if this one I can maybe get. Um, ah, so Ember has these gex. Ember has eclipse. Of course, that's as big as the picture is. That's dumb. Jesus. Um, all right, let me see here. Let's see if I can find another one. I know we're probably spending way too much time on something that we'll probably never see again, but um, <laughs> good old morph market. Let's see. Nope, that's not it. It says it's the pied raptor, blah, blah, blah. Never mind. All right. Well, that's okay. We get, we get the idea. You guys get the idea. So yeah. totally cool. So I learned something. I hope you learned something. There you go. Every day. These Gex Ember has Eclipse. Yes, they should be Eclipse. They should be like a raptor. They should have Eclipse eyes, like either snake eyes or full red eyes, whatever. Um, let's see. On Morph Market, Z-Man says, on Morph Market, it's a blizzard black night. Interesting. Is it on there currently? It would be interesting to know. So, all right. Probably so one snow of those major extremes. <laughs> Um, you know how some of them could get really, 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 really like black. Yes. That could be that. Uh, okay. So Murphy Paternalist, this adult shows the typical color at 10 months of age, uh, photo by Ron and Helene. Uh, Another thing about this particular Murphy Paralyst, it has kind of a dark cast to it. It has a lot of lavender in the tail. I do like that in my Murphy Paralyst, the lavender, um, as opposed to the almost white. And Mr. Yeah. Sykes always has to, his geckos always have the same pose. Always same pose. I don't know if he has like a I think he puts them in training the or something that they put like for border collies or something like he puts these geckos through because they literally are all in the same pose like you could literally black that animal out and transpose any gecko he has in that same spot <laughs> first page as soon as you open it well you know what the the funny part is <laughs> it's like i bet it's just like color forms do you remember color forms when you were growing up you know how they were in a shape and you had to put the the pattern into the shape and it fit yes. when it back in. Well, oh. all he has to do here is just change the colors and go, oh, you know, it's like a, exactly. it's like a color form. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. It says Blizzard Black Knight Blood Cross Tangerines. Interesting. We'll have to look later on in the show. I we'll have to look for that. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's just typical right there. Um. Joe, I hope that's, I hope what you're saying is true, Joe, because pardon my French, I have such a heart. Well, I'm not going to swear here, but I swear like a drunken sailor. It, you know, I just, Julie hates me for it, but I just, that's who I am. I just grew up in a family. A lot of people swore and it was no big deal, but he says, I think it's a camera trick to put your hand over the gecko and position it, remove your hand and quickly snap the photo. I'm going to have to try that because it doesn't work for me. <laughs> It doesn't. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> I I try to put things to like make 
like act, like uh interesting like some rocks or something in there like they might be interested in but no they jump over them and run behind it or whatever just like they don't want to yeah. be anywhere so I, I have to put it on the camera on high speed and i have to set the you know the aperture different than what i normally would and so i'm taking like 30 photos a second kind of thing and then hopefully i get one where there's not a weird movement of the arm or the right. eye is not closed or you know it look like it's deformed <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so murphy patternless rainwater albino uh in making this morph one must be certain that the murphy patternless parent is het free I want to say something about het free right now because this has been a kind of a thing for me coming back into this recently because you know back whatever 20 years ago 10 15 years ago whatever you could almost be certain depending on who you bought something from that if they said it was het free it was probably going to be het free right. and but now <laughs> uh i i literally i've had to rethink and retool some of the projects i'm working on because <coughs> some of my animals that i'm working with are producing almost 100 percent animals that they quote are possible hats for not like 66 percent head or 100 percent head for something possible just possible, like like uh, there's a like when they put the word small in front of it, like a, there's a small possible het for blah blah blah. Well, two out of the three babies out of this one particular father are the the small possible het have popped out in the first in the first three eggs, the first three babies that have hatched. It's like right. you've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. But anyway, so. But it is important if you're working on a project, like a specific, like you don't, like, especially with the Max Snow gene and like, cause Mac, Max Snow and Eclipse kind of throw monkey wrenches in everything that you're working on. Like if you're, if you're trying to lay a baseline for how an animal should look, it's hard to get, if you have animals that have those two traits in them. Oh Yeah it's hard to get those out of your line. Like it's really hard to like, like if you want, like, let's say you want a Murphy cause with me, with my black olive project, I want to, my goal is if is a, a solid green or mostly green leopard gecko with a black tail or mostly black tail. So with the, you know, max snow gene and the eclipse gene, especially the max snow gene, almost all the offspring regardless of you know the color have a shit ton of spot spotting in them like like they just the spotting just blows up on them like they're all so now, like, now i'm thinking i'm already one generation behind should i just start a separate project for an all black spotted gecko with the black tail you know that has a green undertone to it you know and yeah. then you i think know. you should i think you should definitely but it is important that you know to find somebody that you trust and that may take a little work to truly get animals that are het free for if you want to truly start a project and start with a clean slate it's so um, difficult because in i don't care whether you're breeding you know dogs cats geckos whatever you're not just dealing with the parents genetics you're dealing with the parents and the parents and the parents and the grandparents and you know all that all the way on through for generations i yeah. mean you can pull something out from the fourth or fifth generation and be like what the hell you know it's just the way the ball rolls it's so hard to get anything that's yeah. just not uh that doesn't contain any you know a pure line to find a pure line yeah it's hard it's definitely hard rd i agree that but i think the the nkh the no known heads i think that's a cop out for some people mm -hmm. you know like they'll just because that kind of gives them an out it's like well i really didn't know i've only had this animal for a year or whatever and right. i didn't i didn't know 
the person I got it from, you know, what they were using it for or whatever, what it hatched Me, from. Sometimes and, I see that and think, oh, yeah, it's got hats. <laughs> exactly. As soon as I oh, see no. known known hats, I'm thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It's got it's got probably every known recessive demand or whatever. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, <laughs> so Murphy, Murphy pattern. Every time I say Murphy, I think of RoboCop. So I <laughs> I'm sorry if I stumble when I say Murphy because I, I sort of almost want to laugh when I say it. But um, hey, Sarah, how are you doing? So Murphy Patternless Tremper Albino, a.k.a. TPA. Well, I could have made that AK up. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Tremper Patternless Albino. Well, that took a lot of thinking. When breeders first tried to make this morph, the mathematical probability, and I'm just seeing that meme now with the lady with all the little math formulas floating oh, around yeah. her head and stuff like that. The mathematical probability when breeding the double hets together was one out of two, but it turned out to be more like one out of 200. One cannot always predict outcomes. That's, yeah, that's true. We're, we're just talking about that. Um, Let's see. Sarah says my car needs repair. What? Oh, no. Murphy Patternless Bell Albino Eclipse, a.k.a. Murphy Patternless, or MP Radar. Sorry, I don't want to say Murphy Patternless. I got to use the acronym. Easy. MP Radar. So this is basically the same as the Snowflake or the Ember then, but with the Bell Albino instead of the Tremper Albino. Oh, look. Very rare. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I I was saving that to you know just like boom, there you go. Very rare. <laughs> I know somebody of morph market that would love to have this animal. Oh no and, doubt. And advertise it. Photo by Vincent Vinci, Vinci Reptiles. That's an interesting name. Does anybody actually does do, do you know who this person is? Mm, no. Huh. Nathan's Wildlife, how are you doing? My cousin Vinny. Vincent Vinny. Yeah, it almost sounds like if the if the mob had like a leopard gecko breeding operation. Hey, do you see that stuff Vincent Vinny had over there? You gotta go check him out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, he'll make you a deal you can't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why are they the number one leopard gecko seller in New York in the Bronx or whatever? <laughs> Sorry, Vincent. I'm, I don't know who you are, and I'm sorry I'm making fun of you, but it's you got to admit you can't. You, that's that's just asking for it. So, okay, moving on. What is this one here? Oh, same animal or same type of animal, just from a top view. That I will have to say that's some very intense color. That's pretty um, impressive. I like the high white feet. Yeah. Very nice. Denise likes her bells. I love my bells. I have to say, I love. My I have bells. to say, I like her bells too, and I could see why she would want to dump her trempers. So, <laughs> yes, yes, my trempers I love for <laughs> certain aspects, but in all honesty, I'm rolling with the bells. Yeah, I just had an image of Joe Pesci in my head when uh, Diablo uh, Garcia said, two Utes, Utes." Was was That's my right. cousin Vinny? I guess was that where that was from. The judge Herman Munster was like, "Utes, did you say Utes? Utes? What's a Ute? Yeah, what's, <laughs> what's a Ute? Ute? <laughs> that was a good movie. If you haven't seen it, my cousin Vinny, it's a good movie, worth a watch. Murphy Patternless Super Snow, aka Platinum, sounds like it's a Kiss album, double platinum or double live platinum, whatever. Mm. Murphy Patternless Super Snow. On the surface, this is, as a baby anyway, it looks cool. I mean. I did see one snow. that was posted on Morph Market, but it was not impressive looking like this. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it was kind of gray. Norm says, I'm starting to like bells too. That's cool. Mm, love my bells. Oh, my God. The, they are so brilliant, so bright, such interesting, dark, contrasting tangerines i've got purple little heads hey i got purple heads y'all like real um, purple heads like they are 
they come out with a purple purple stamps on their hands. Did you see the purple babies that Rebecca has been posting lately? No. Oh my god, they are literally purple. They are insane looking. We'll have to oh look at those before we leave here. They are, I mean they floored me when I saw those. No doubt. That's that was like the effort of, you know, 12 years of line breeding or whatever and people telling her that she couldn't breed a all purple leopard gecko. <laughs> so, uh, let's cool. see. Hey, Junior's geckos. I didn't see you sneak in there. There you go. Um, let's see. So here's another platinum. Looks like it's a little older, yeah. which to me, this, this looks more like a, like a blizzard, like a, um, like a midnight blizzard or whatever blizzard. Um, when I see dirty. this, this combo morph can be silver, gray, tan, or mauve. Oh, they actually use the word mauve in here. That's cool. Ooh. Instead of pink. Who uses mauve. that word anymore? Or excuse me, if you want to be legit, you'd say mauve. Mauve. Mm -hmm. Junior says, I'm a sucker for the actual purple headline and still can't say I've hatched a dozen out of three years of producing a line myself. I know, right? Seriously. Right? That's I why I got, out, I got out of them, but uh, they're nice. Look, don't get me wrong. They're nice looking animals. And I think Joe has some really nice looking. I think it was Joe that I saw. I'm getting everybody can confused now, but uh, there are some nice looking purple heads out there, but they're few and far between. That's yeah, it's not like a, it's a common tough thing. One to yeah. Her punt. How you doing? So Murphy patternless snow eclipse, the white nose, here we go again. The white nose is a marker for being an eclipse, um, which, you know, and I think in pretty much most cases I've seen the white nose, but you know, also the little pied little patch in the middle of the head there, um, kind of the white in the legs, but there's so many morphs that have white in the legs. Now it's not, that can't really, you know, it's scoop. Hey, Scoop. Murphy Paddleness Trumper Albino Eclipse, a.k.a. Ember. Didn't we just talk about this? Ember. Yeah. The bell version is the radar. Murphy Paddleness Radar. Yeah, we talked about this. Come on. Right, we already went into the Ember. It is, it is proven very difficult to create for breeders. Yes, we established that. Okay. So some intentionally blank space here. Enigmas, everybody's uh, favorite morph to either like or hate, or exactly. there's, you know, it's like you, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. So that's all I got to say with enigmas. Um, mm -hmm. I personally love enigmas. I've owned a few in the past. I've never bred them, but I just, I like the way they look. Yeah. Um, I know other people that keep them and I know they're still big in Canada and I know they're still big in Europe. Um, but it is what it is. You're either on that boat with the people that like enigmas and you're okay with keeping them and blah, blah, blah. Or you're on the boat with the people that want to burn you at the stake because you have an enigma and you're, or you want to breed them or whatever the case is. So Truth. it is, it is what it is. Um, so it is a controversial gene morph, uh, gene. We'll just call it gene. It's not really a morph, but, um, at least I don't think it's a morph, like because Enigma can be combined with a lot of stuff. So just like Max Snow. Um, a dominant gene that enhances color. No super form is known. So you're not going to see a cape or the letter S or anything like that. So awesome. Examples have a variety of beautiful light colors on the head and body. The tail is white to light gray and often lacks pattern and other pigments. Some Enigmas exhibit head shaking similar to the spider morph ball python uh, and walking in circles. Um, I did. I know I knew one person that had an enigma that did do the walking in circle thing. Uh, um, it wasn't all the time. It was when it was stressed like these, a lot of these traits for enigma make rear its head when the animal gets stressed. And that's kind of when this animal would display this walking in circles is when it would get stressed. Her punt is saying that he's had one hatched out or he's not sure if it's an enigma, 
Um, hatched a gecko the other day. He's wobbly, but not bad. Just balance isn't there. Is that enigma? I don't know. You'd almost have to look at the look and see what the animal looked like too. Um, Cause the enigmas are very, they're like eclipse sort of, they do some crazy things with, um, with pattern and stuff. But usually there's a lot of spotting, a lot of, sometimes some of them have a lot of lavender in them. Um, seems to reduce the pat or the color of the, uh, the body color. Yes. Yeah, so, so they would look drab. So Yvette, um, I have not seen, let me see if I have a picture of that enigma real quick. Um, do, 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 do. One moment, please. And like I said, this one was a pet. It wasn't like in part of any breeding program or anything. Um, I just liked it. It was a, somebody was selling it locally on Craigslist and they didn't want to keep it anymore because they, they knew that these potentially had problems. So it was more of like a, like a surrender kind of thing. They knew that I had leopard geckos and they just wanted it to go somewhere, you know, that would get taken care of. And uh, it was a female. This was the picture I took at the girl's house that I got it from. Um, but I just, I think it's, when I saw this, I just thought it was the coolest thing because of the charcoaly, like lavender in the head that it just abruptly changes into this like drab yellow kind of thing. Um, then abruptly goes into this kind of crazy spotted tail. Um, it has, it almost looks like, um, I don't know. It's got, we, it's like got multiple speckles of different colors, like in the body. Um, yes. Whole lot of lavender in them. Um, and then this picture is of the same animal a few months later. Let's see. You can see it lost a lot of the yellow. Um, still had the, the crazy spotting and stuff, but it lost some of the dark spots on the tail. It only had a couple. Uh, so it lightened up considerably over a couple months and I don't know, it, was just, it was just an interesting looking gecko and I, I had it until I sold my collection, you know, it, it ate fine and you know, it was, I never had a problem with it, but again, I never had, had intention in breeding it. So, uh, okay. So let's see, where did we live off here? The, uh, this unwanted behavior is intensified when enigmas are bred together or with white and yellows. Um, over, over time, selective breeding has not improved this health issue. Um, dazzling enig enigma combo morphs are one of a kind. And I, I kind of agree with that statement that, cause you never, you never know when you combine enigma with something, what you're going to get. It's never the same thing twice. Never. Like you can produce, you can have the same parents and have a hundred babies. And none of them look alike. Right. So, uh, let's see. So, selective breeding has not improved the health issue. Please note that one cannot predict and therefore duplicate such breeding results. That issue combined with the head shaking make, make this a risky and often dead-end venture. Beware of hype in the marketplace. And that's with a lot of morphs. Just, you know, yeah. just, just keep, keep it real with what you're looking at and do your research, you know, just be aware of what you're looking at ahead of time. Yeah. And it, you know, that holds true. I mean, you, you have to trust really who you're buying your geckos from because, you know, it's so easy to say, you know, that somebody could pull the wool over your eyes and sell you Enigma offspring, um, you know, and, and not think twice about it and not put the name. So, you know, did you guys just, do your homework. That's for sure. Yeah. I never heard of the B, the, an acronym for the black eyed enigma using the eclipse gene. Some enigmas show black or red eyes without the eclipse gene. I have seen black holes. The black holes were advertised heavily for quite a while. 
Um, so, which is the combination of the Enigma, Max, No, and Eclipse gene. Dreamsicle was big with like Urban Gecko, like that was a thing in Canada. Um, Enigma, Max, No, Tremper, Albino, Eclipse. They do look nice. They look. I have a picture one in uh, one of my folders, but again, it's a kind of a dead end kind of deal. Nova, Enigma, Tremper, Albino Eclipse, Supernova, and you see a lot of those, or used to see a lot of those advertised. Yeah, you don't see it much anymore. No, which was the Enigma, Max, no, Max Super Snow, Tremper, Albino Eclipse. Stealth, I don't know if I've ever heard of a stealth, but Enigma, mm -mm. Snow, Bell, Albino Eclipse, Super, Super Stealth, Enigma, Super Snow, Bell, Albino Eclipse. Say that say that five times fast. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So here's a stealth. This is a Enigma Snowbell Albino Eclipse. And the hatchling is below there. Well, that is kind of cool looking though. It is kind of cool looking. With red eyes. But you know I think as an adult it like wouldn't be eyes. as cool. <laughs> you know how much like Denise likes her red eyes. Mm. Enigma Bell Albino Sun Glows. See that bell that bell albino just they're always nice and bright. Oh uh, my even, gosh. Even right out of the egg, they are glowing. I can't tell you. I mean, I am I'm so in love with my bell albinos. I truly am. They're so cool. Uh, Enigma red spotted het albino or het bell albino, I should say. So to me, like this is getting more in line with like what you can accomplish with the eclipse gene in white and yellow. Yeah. Either with bell or tremper. Yeah, like it has this, the high this. white sides. Yeah. You know, it's got the white feet and the white legs. Yeah, for sure. And the spotting and stuff. It just like yeah. so now now we can get this without the Enigma gene. We can you know exactly. we're we're already we're at that point in the uh, living art phase that we can, we don't need the Enigma gene for stuff like that. Let's see. Enigma red stripe bell albino above and below. So, I mean, that is kind of cool. It is. <laughs> Again, that bell, that bell really accents that has that real high contrast orange with the yellow there. That's uh, yep. that is cool. I kind of, that's an interesting looking pattern on the head there. Like, Somebody took like a little laser engraver and zzz, it got rid of the color there. Just, I know yeah. you came, you came to this show for the sound effects. I know. Absolutely. Uh, see, Joe says, Vito, Vitiligo. Vitiligo. What's Vitiligo, Joe? Explain your, explain it, explain it. What are you talking about? Yes. Gotta love the white and yellow. I do. I absolutely love Vertigo. The, mod, the modern 100% vertigo gecko. Blech. God, I can't talk. Vertigo geckos. Sounds like a, like a Bob Evans commercial. Anyway. Mm. Love me some uh, biscuits and gravy. Ew. If you guys ever want to get me a um, gift card to Bob Evans or something. <laughs> Did you say ew? <laughs> ew. You don't even you don't like biscuits anything. and gravy? Come you, on. Oh my god, that looks like freaking you open a can of Alpo and put it on a biscuit. <laughs> Skin discoloration. Easy for me to say. Okay, gotcha. Loss okay. of skin pigment. Vitiligo. Vitiligo. So kind of like the Michael Jackson syndrome. Mm, skin discoloration. Gotcha. Bacon. Yes. Well, I grew up in a Southern family and that, that it was every Sunday. It was like biscuits and gravy. It was just like, <laughs> I love my mom's bis biscuits and gravy. They were so good. Yeah. The bacon rocks. I'll go with that. Totally. Yeah. Bacon. You can have bacon on anything. You can have bacon flavored cookies. I mean, shoot. Yeah. Bacon and bacon. peanut butter. Mm. Yes. Definitely. Bleaching. Yeah. That's a good way to describe it. So Enigma, white and yellow, snow, wow. het, rainwater, albino. Chocolate gravy. Mm, I'll do that. <laughs> All right, Norm, you got a you got a hookup. Got the chocolate gravy, chocolate nice. Gravy, yeah. Had me a chocolate. Uh, let's see here. 
Enigma, Tangerine, Tramper, Albino. See this, like if you were to just see this, you would, I would not know that that had the Enigma gene in it. Like I would no. think it was an eclipse, something or other, white and yellow, blah, 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 you know. But this is interesting. Let's see, Enigma Snow Eclipse, a.k.a. Black Hole. Because this looks like it could be almost like a twin sister to my hyperxanthic lavender bold stripe female mm. that I have. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Keep this animal in your head for a second. Mm. Yeah. It's leaving. You better hurry. That's what? Oh, it's, it's leaving. leaving. You better hurry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You're, My old you're brain fine. doesn't retain too long. You're fine. Let's see. Jeez. Gecko picks. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hmm. Only difference between the, the way this one kind of looks and the other one, the Enigma, is this head actually has yellow on it instead of all lavender or whatever, like that Enigma head. Right. Uh, but this has kind of that same look without having the Enigma gene. Mm hmm. So, <laughs> Kyle says, hot fudge is chocolate gravy. Changed my mind. There you go. Cool. I'll take your word for it. All right, now I got to find my place here. Uh, there we go. Okay. Present, share screen. You're making everybody hungry on the list here. Everybody's like, Yeah, hey. I made myself hungry too. No. Well, you got to come prepared, you know? <laughs> yeah, Denise, she's got like a 10 pound bag of caramel popcorn. No, wait, wait, no. <laughs> See, first I have this. If I, I, these are my favorites. Okay. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I used to have those as a kid. Those are, I love, those are my favorite gummy bears. My favorite. Okay. Has and to be then, Haribo. Oh, I love them. And then this, of course, I'm a boom chicka boom. pop. <laughs> boom chicka pop. Yep. You, you got, well, you know what? Sometimes that's my dinner. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Yes, yeah, sometimes they do. People use the use lavender very or lavender stripe very loosely. So oh, yes, yes, yes. Yvette. definitely they throw lavender around because they think it's going to bring in more more money. <laughs> oh, God, what, what was that band? Answer. They had that song "Black Hole Sun." Uh, why can't I think of that? See, I I kind of blanked out most of the '90s and the early 2000s because I hated most of the bands during that time period. So. But Black Hole Sun was a good song. I just I know Julie is watching this and she's like like yelling in her mind the name of the band to me because it's probably one of her favorite bands. But uh Soundgarden, I think. Soundgarden. Okay. Enigma Tremper Albino Eclipse, aka Nova. Yeah, to me it's just it looks like if you didn't really know, it just Right. Yeah, like, like, meh, it's okay. Yeah, it's all right. It's okay. Dreamsicle. So note the plain colored tail associated with the Enigma gene. So now this look here kind of reminds me of some of the stuff that, um, Chris has over at suburban geckos, like with his bells and his white and yellow kind of crosses um, and eclipse and that kind of stuff kind of, kind of reminds me that maybe with a little Mac snow mixed in there, you know, that kind of take away some of the color. Um, that's kind of what it re reminds me of again, easy to accomplish now without the Enigma gene. Yeah. Creeps a good song too. 
I was listening to a lot of Nine Inch Nails back then. Let's see. Okay, Jim Snows. Now we're getting into a section that... See, I love Jim Snows. I love Tugs. Well, not as much as I love Jim Snows. Love uh, Tug Snows. I'm okay with Max Snows only because there's there's so many they're so ingrained or infused to a lot of the stuff that's out there today is Max Snows or you know it's just it's just kind of so it's kind of cool when you see stuff like Gem Snows or Line Bread Snows you know like Tug Snows and um, Albies. It's, it's so hard to find a pure Gem Snow today. Oh, I know. I just they're they're so beautiful to me. I just I love the way. Let's see. Joe says, gems are the only I work with. Mm. Interesting. Maybe you'll have to send me a Diablo gem snow at some point. <laughs> <laughs> a Diablo Joe gem snow. Yeah, that's right. The gem snow is a dominant gene, which you know, most, most of these snows are, except for the line bread snows. Uh, this means that when bred to other morphs, morphs, the result is a mathematical probability of 50% gem snows. Gem snow crossed with gem snows does not produce a super form or a super snow form like the max snow does. But when bred to a max snow, the outcome will produce a percentage of max super snows. Interesting. That's interesting. Right. In the first generation. So Ooh. that's kind of interesting. Because hmm. normally you have to produce the snow offspring and then breed those to make right. super snows. So what, what they're saying here is a gem snow with a max snow will produce max super snows so that's cool that's an that's actually interesting to know very but that's a cool they're so cool looking like snows in general i just i love the way the babies look i just wish they kept that black and white contrast all the way into adulthood like can you imagine this as an adult leopard gecko that would be so cool That'd be insane See, Joe says, I have a gem project whose name I won't release yet. Going to blow people away if it works out. Well, that's cool. Sweet. So it is the Diablo project we shall not, sh that shall not be named. <laughs> but everybody knows about now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joe. See, Yvette, I love gem snows. The Albi snows are gorgeous too, yes. And Rebecca over there, over across the pond works with, with Albies and she has some really, really nice, really, really nice looking stuff. Whose birthday is it? I just saw somebody say happy birthday. Uh, oh, thank you. Let's see. I'm out drinking with my brother. Is my birthday? Oh, Z Man. Okay. Yeah. Happy he birthday. Sent you some pictures, he said. Oh, uh, it was probably in Messenger. I haven't looked at Messenger yet or anything. So um, we'll do that towards the end of the show here. So this photo is by David Pelletier. So this must be one of those David David's fine geckos. Does anybody know David's fine geckos? Nope. Are they in the United States? Are they European? I don't know about that. Surfside, hey hey, how you doing? But yes, that is such a that's a beautiful animal. G Gem snows are so underrated. And I'm glad, Joe, wink wink, that you're working with them now and you got some undisclosed project going on. Uh, see now look at this. Look at that. Gem snow striped bandit. Gosh, that is so that is so cool looking to me. Like it almost doesn't look real. Like it's like a watercolor painting or something, you know, it's just kind of, I don't know. At least it doesn't have red eyes, Denise. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, this is right up Denise's alley right here. Ooh. Except the, not the red eyes, of course, but uh, yeah. Gem Snow Lavender Bell Albino Eclipse, a.k.a. Gem Snow Radar. That's cool. Hmm. Look at that little Denise, bulldog head. I know. That's, I, I was wondering. That's why I said this is right up your alley. Like, yeah. Uh, Denise is like Z babies. A lot of her Z babies have little blotches of color like this or lack of color or yeah, whatever. Yeah, they've got that. You know, um, I, I don't know. 
don't want to use the term mauve because I don't like that word. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, kind it's of pink. like you that. Use pink. I do. I like pink. Yeah, I like that one. I mean, that you have to use mauve. You can use the same pink. Yeah, that little one that hatched out the other day. She's just pink, like like cotton candy. She's so cute. A true gem. With all the genetic components known, there are hundreds of combination morphs, morphs possible. I do. I, I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to, with the stuff I'm getting from Scott and Denise, I think I'm going to have to incorporate gem snow into the mix. I just, that is such a cool snow to me. So gem snow electric tremper albino. This combo result makes the effort worthwhile. You know, I have to make a comment here, and, you know, I always have an opinion. If you took out the gem snow part and just saw electric tramper albino, like if you go on Morph Market right now and look at some of like the high contrast stuff yeah. like that Scott Noble has, this looks just like those, but without the gem snow aspect. Right. Um, so, Scott, great job. Because a lot of his high contrast tremper albinos look like this. Um, let's see, gem snow cross with black knight. Is that what you have, RD, or is that a wish animal, or is that something on Morph Market you've seen? Gem snow lavender radar. So you know if it's radar, it's a bell albino. Um, yeah, that just is like eh. Yeah, that's amazing. I was like eh. I'm not big on, uh, and again, I, to each their own. I'm not, I'm not poo pooing anything. Like if you love this, I'm not saying yeah. this because I think nobody should like it. I just, I personally just, this is not like up my alley. I'm not a big fan of just like the blah, like the, the blah, like the, I don't know. There's just, it's um, kind of brown. It goes back to that brown thing. Yeah, I don't know, but like, I just, I don't know. It's like, it's like in the old days when you had like some of those old ruddy looking albinos, like yeah. they were just like, you know, yeah, they just turned me off of albinos. Like to me, like this is kind of that look without the stripe, you know, like that old albino kind of, you know, old school, whatever. So not liking what the gem snow does with that. I do kind of like that though. Um, this is a gem snow lavender's striped snake eyed eclipse again you know you throw that eclipse in there squishy devotion hello how you doing squishy devotion why have i why is that name familiar hey joe is that your daughter is squishy devotion uh are you diablo garcia's spawn offspring squishy I'll probably lay a golden brick if you are, because I'm usually not right about stuff like that. But, but here you add the, add the eclipse. Yeah. It start, you start getting that little spotting in there. Start oh, laying is. away. Nice. There you go. Well, welcome, Squish. Squishy. Do you go by Squish? <laughs> <laughs> Since we're shortening words here, we'll just Diablo Squish or Squishy Diablo, whatever. Or Junior Diablo Squishy. I don't know, getting carried away here, but. I like I kind of liked how that looks a little bit just that because of the, the eclipse spotting, you know. Yeah. I just but they I don't know that I would actually keep these and breed these. I just I just like the way they look. The eye looks like it's uh um like cross eyed. Yes. Squishy or Samantha works. Okay. So we'll go with squish, squishy. Sorry. Your father can call you some Samantha. Well, more intentionally blank pages, apparently. Ghosts, another one of my favorites. See, we're getting in this section that's just like, except for people in Europe, like, like nobody has ghosts. Diablo Squish will never go away after today. That's right. Okay, so ghosts. This is a gecko in which the primary hatching colors fade with age. The name can be applied to any pattern. So I'm kind of getting the sense like, yeah, you can probably apply the term ghost to almost anything that's light colored <laughs> or has reduced, right. you know, that's washed out looking. Yeah. Ghosts tend to show high quality of green. Ah, interesting. Hmm. 
me know how much I like green. Compared to many other morphs, which can range from light to dark in hue, the colors of yellow and orange are not expressed on the body and rarely on the tail, which can change due, uh, due to time of day, temperature, and level of excitement. Well, that applies to just about every leopard gecko. <coughs> um, outcrossings have shown to enhance the amount of lavender. That's part of the reason why I like ghosts is the lavender aspect. A ghost is the result of genetics and should not be confused with the Mac or gem snow groups or with the fading that often occurs in females during and after egg laying due to the depletion of nutrients. A ghost is hard to be, is hard to be determined until a gecko reaches six inches in total length, six inches. That's a weird, uh, usually it's like a age or a weight or something, but six inches in total length because of the ontogenetic color change seen in all geckos, but with experience, their subtle traits can be recognized much earlier. Many ghost combos are being established in the industry work with this interesting morph orig originally in Germany, which there is still a lot going on there. And now in the U USA, I don't know if, personally of anybody working with ghosts are showing re unique results and gives one reason to explore its genetics and undiscovered possibilities. Uh, Cause I think ghosts would be <coughs> awesome with your Z stuff, unless your Z stuff has ghost in it already. Cause that's kind of what your, some of your Z stuff has. Um, let's see. Purchasing from a known breeder is essential. Yeah. We've established that based on the current information available, the ghost is best placed in this genetic cat category as dominant. So the one thing I do notice about ghosts, and I have to say, like with your Z project and with like Victorian geckos and blah, 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 a lot of their, a lot of your animals that I notice with ghost animals is this white right here, like these white blotches on the yep. side um, with the pink, you know, that kind of thing, like with the lavender in the yes. top. Um, but these white blotches, almost like, like they rubbed up against the wall that had wet paint or something, you know, yes. that's kind of. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. That is absolutely, I love that. That's just, that's fantastic. I love that look. Um, striped ghost tests have shown it to not be Mac or gem snow. So, and this is again from Rebecca. This photo is from Rebecca Hassler, Dragoon Gecko. She does work with, like I said, a lot of ghost stuff. Um, beautiful morph. I just, I love it. Just beautiful. Ghost compilation. These images, and again, this is from Rebecca. This is actually, this picture is on Rebecca's website. Uh, these images show the juvenile and adult color change. So, I mean, this animal right here is just, just very cool to me. Like, in this here, and it goes back to my fascination with, like, Max Snow babies kind of getting that same look into adulthood, like that black and white, that, you know, that, um, you know what I'm trying to say. And it's interesting. Like this one down here looks like some of the stuff that Denise is producing down here. Uh, her Z babies, like, like I think that male that you're, that you have, we'll put, we'll put in air quotes, put aside for me. looks like this little guy right here a little yeah. bit. Yeah, very similar. Um, just cool. Just cool. Just very cool. How could you not like those? And again, I'm not trying to make you like anything or dislike anything. I'm just, I just get excited about certain things. And, you know, hopefully you guys have morphs that you like yourselves or traits that you like yourselves. And uh, now we're going to get in some another one of those enigma territory kind of things here um, with yeah. lemon frost and mm -hmm. super lemon frost. That's actually recently been a controversy, but uh. very, very much. I mean, I don't think in all honesty, it's really the way I have. A, I have a strong belief about this. You know, it's it, I think. It shouldn't be worked with, but that's my thought. Yeah. AKA LF. Here we go. We're just going to everything from now on. We're just going to do the first letter of each, whatever. So AKA LF lemon frost. There you go. A random mutation that emerged in 2012 at the gourmet, the gourmet rodent of all places. 
the gore. Maybe there's too many mouse fumes or something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Elemen Frost is an example of an incomplete dominance. This morph is characterized by having predominantly or entirely white eyes caused by a high imbalance of iridophore pigment cells as, it, as is the body color. It may have a large head with bright yellow and rich black body color in, in the non-albinos. Some Lemon Frost outcross to other morphs, excuse me, have also shown to have enlarged eyes. So they got that's this is the Marty Feldman morph, mm -hmm. uh, along with the NDBE or whatever, uh, which reportedly has improved over time compared to the Enigma apparently, with whatever issues. While the non Lemon Frost siblings never show the eye size issue. Interesting. When a Lemon Frost is bred to a non Lemon Frost, the result is, in theory, a fifty percent Lemon Frost, meaning that each Egg has a 50% chance of being a lemon frost. Lemon, let's see, lemon frost and examples combined with other morphs produce beautiful colors unique to the industry. Yeah, the first if you example, like lumps all over your gecko's <laughs> yeah. body, you know. Right. Jesus. Like Chet from Weird Science. Oh my God. It's like you got a third world country grown out of its head. <laughs> The first examples were offered to the public in 2016. Unfortunately, its potential has been thwarted. I hate when things are thwarted by its production of malignant tumors, which has there left its future in doubt. So we'll skip this kind of section here because yeah. we all know there's issues. Um, I mean, they are pretty geckos. I mean, they're don't get me wrong. Well, there's but. no doubt, but. So let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's keep. We'll, we'll scroll a little farther past here. That's an interesting look. Um, geez, for something that's got some issues, there's a lot of pictures. Um, geez, looks like a toke gecko from the bottom. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Uh, see without lemon frost i would this would be an interesting like with the z project that denise has yeah i would like to see something like this be produced consistently this animal right here it's possible that's, that's very cool looking to me with the lavender in the head and the spotting and the, again that the white on the sides there like it rubbed up against some paint kind of thing right very that's a very cool looking animal there's no doubt they're they are pretty Jeez, this is like almost the biggest section <laughs> i know right Holy for an cow. animal that has so many problems let's <laughs> dedicate a whole chapter <laughs> let's see here uh it is sad yes very sad so Joe says, Diablo Garcia says, sorry, their radiance isn't their fault. Neither is the pain their breeders put them through. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's sad Wise enough. words, wise words from Senor, Senor Diablo. Um, I think we're, we'll stop with Max Nose. We'll save Max Nose for next time, or the next time we do this segment. Yeah. Um, so let me see what pictures. Yeah. I'm going to see what, um, Z man sent here real quick. Sorry. I'm eating dinner on the go. Uh, if I had stuff down here, I'd be totally be eating too. Um, I didn't have time for dinner tonight. And it's weird since we're, this is totally off the subject. This is more for to Denise's ears, but uh, you remember that second Max Snow looking baby I sent you? Oh, yeah. That had hatched after the first one. 
even though it hatched after the first one, it's already double the size of the first one. It's amazing. It's only, it's only two weeks old and yeah. it's already double the size of the other one. That's pretty amazing. I know. Some are just genetically predisposed to be bigger. It's just kind of the way it is. And the other one's healthy. You know, it's nice, that little chubby little baby and stuff. It's just, uh, this other one is just chubby too, but it's big. Yeah. That's good. Which I'm pleasantly surprised about because I just, it's a, it's a nice looking animal. Well, good. Okay. Let's see. What do we got here? So this is, uh, yeah, the, um, to bring up that point there was, okay. So gourmet rodent went out of business. Okay. Everybody probably knows that probably by yeah. now there was a lot of lemon frosts. I can't remember how many that were brought to a show in Florida. Um, and a, jobber uh was given the geckos he used to work for the gourmet rodent many many years ago mm -hmm. so he took on these animals and brought them to a show and sold them and there was probably i don't know how many but they all sold out um so there's lemon frost dispersed now throughout florida and Lord knows what hands they've gotten into. Um, it's just quite amazing to see that somebody would do that to the marketplace. But, you know, it's all about the dollar bill. But it makes me very sad to know that somebody who probably purchased this because the price was so low that they're going to face their kid or whoever they bought it for themselves or their child is going to have to watch their poor gecko suffer with yep. with the probability of a life threatening illness $25 each thanks Jen um, there was 50 of them so yes, yes. scary as that may be um it, it just blows my mind that people are that uncaring to do that. Yep. So uh, Z sent this picture. This is the one on Morph Market. It's a Blizzard Black Knight, Black, I say Black Knight Max Snow Bold Tangerine. Holy crap. Crap. Crossed. Max Snow, Black Knight, blah, 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 whatever, whatever it is. But uh, let's see here. Hold on. But you can actually, in this, I guess since we were talking about Murphy panelists, you can see that Swiss cheese thing in the neck there. Yeah. You can also see that it's having a little bit of a shedding issue, too, on its nose and on the side of its head there. Needs some moisture. Needs some something. That is cool looking. I mean, I wouldn't probably pay whatever they're asking for, but if I popped out a baby like that, that would be cool. All right, so that's what Anthony sent. Uh, let's see here. If there's any others in there that I should be paying attention to here. Uh, so... um. To reiterate what Joe just typed, the gourmet rodent back in the day, and we're talking back in the mid 90s, um, we did a lot of dealings with the gourmet rodent up there. Bill Marsha Brandt owned it at the time. It was quite the facility. Um, he had a rodent specific building, he had a gecko specific building. Um, and it was very, very well run. It was clean. He had, I can't even tell you how many employees on at one time that were students of um, Florida. They were Florida Gators. And um, it was quite, quite an establishment. Once that was sold off, um, once Bill and Marsha backed away, 
things did go down the crapper. Um, not gonna lie there. And um, it's a shame. It's a shame because the facility itself was quite amazing in its day. Um, but it, it truly goes to show you if things aren't cared for in the proper way, how quickly it could, could you know, be its own demise. But um, mm. sad enough, um, there was some, some bad dealings going on there. Yeah, sadly, back in the day, a lot of that happened to a few businesses. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, it does. It does happen that way. People take them on and and don't realize the what really what it takes to to run them and run them properly, and then they run them into the ground, and that that happens. Yeah, they they take a name and they want to ride ride on the popularity of the name, you know, and the hopefully keeping their clients and stuff, and then they they don't give the same level of service and care of their animals and their customers. And they literally just like, yeah. I mean, the road and building itself was just incredible. And the same thing with the gecko building. It was just rows and rows of racks. And I told you about the little pinky trolley that would go around with all the pinky parks. <laughs> no, that's the best way to call it. It's not like the ice cream truck coming down the road, you know, pinky it's, trolley. it's the pinky trolley. <laughs> and that was that kid's job was he was the pinky trolley expediter you know he would go up to a group and pull a tray and everybody got a pinky you got a pinky you got a pinky you got a pinky and it was pinky parts and they opened the gecko's mouth and popped it in there and <laughs> you were eating it whether you wanted to or not oh man yeah Okay, I'm going to, uh, um, Anthony sent some pictures last week that I never got to, and uh, so I'm going to show a few of those before we head out, and uh, I don't know what morphs they are, let me see, I don't think I labeled them, no, I just have them labeled, I have them labeled Anthony Z, so, so Anthony, if you're still on, you might have to shout out what they are so do 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 numero yeah. uno so the leopard geckos were being fed pinky parts the heads you know the bodies usually are too squishy but the heads were easier to force feed <laughs> and some some leopard gecko people are surprised by that but some leopard geckos actually like pinkies oh, yeah. mm -hmm. i mean they they have no problem eating, eating a pinky. Um, it's, it has a lot of fat in it for the mamas, um, you know, that are carrying eggs and producing and, and there again for the males too. Yeah. Obviously that's a meal. Like you would like, wouldn't feed multiple times during the week. I, you would just, you know, it's got so the much. Trolley only came down once a week, but you know, the it trolley. was always on the day I was there. I think we would go down on Tuesdays and uh, yeah, the trolley was always making its rounds. <laughs> <laughs> I just, for those of you that ever saw Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, um, what Denise is describing reminds me of the, the camp. Candy man that would come around with the trolley thing to try to lure the kids into this cage. <laughs> and, uh, oh my god! Nowadays anyway. they call that a raper van. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, first, first Anthony picture here. It's cool. Yellow looks like it's got some green or black on the back there. Nice carrot tail. Oh, Chris sent me a message. He says, tell John that Joe is now known as DJ Diablo Joe, also known as DJ. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. DJ. Nice. Uh, there's a few pictures to go through. Hold on a second. I'll try to go through them. A little more quickly here. Looks like a similar animal, short, smaller 
carrot tail, shorter or not as much carrot tail, but very light colored head, very cool yellow, and kind of got some. Oh yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Um, wait, which Chris just texted you? Ackerman. Oh. <laughs> For some reason, he's on YouTube. I don't know if it's on his TV's YouTube that he can't uh, correspond with us. Yeah, if you're using the app on your TV, you can you can watch the chat, but you can't interact with it yeah, unless yeah. you have some kind of keyboard thing. But exactly. if you're on your phone using YouTube, you should be able to use the chat. Very cool, kind of patternless with a little bit of a carrot tail. Sort of patternless anyway. Right. Uh, Um, kind of a white and yellowish look, you know, with a little bit of a high white side there and some ghosting on the top. You know, like the pattern looks a little, or the color looks a little bit reduced or faded or whatever. I don't know if it's from breeding or just how it looks. I think they, that's a young looking animal. So I would imagine. It does look it, young. Yeah. I would imagine when it, it was young, it had a lot of lavender in those little bands as it was dispersing, and I'm sure it was a super pretty baby, too. Yes, there's a, I think this is the same. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, same kind of idea, reduced color right, in the middle right. there. Definitely. Um, this one kind of looks Max Snowish. Oh, yeah. That's an itty bitty baby. Yeah. And the itty bitty ones are the ones that scream scream the most because they're the most defensive. <laughs> like the world's out to get them. Truth. Uh, let's see, I got a couple more here. A baby of some kind. <laughs> Again, kind of the head kind of looks like the pattern or the colors kind of washed out a little bit. Almost looks like that other gecko, but only as a baby. Yeah. Interesting. One, one more. Have Andy. you noticed the numbers have skyrocketed on uh, Morph Market? I think there's close to 2,700 entries. Yeah, there's no. a number of them. This seems to be like the peak, peak of the, whatever you want to call it, this yeah, season. Yeah, it's the week. You know, it's Pomona weekend, and it's um, the week before the Daytona Expo. Um, so it's a busy time. And right now, I think there's um, there there's a plethora of, of leopard geckos out there. Yep. Yep. Uh, not sure what this is going to end up look like, looking like, but darker head than the last one. Yeah. Uh, but really an over, like an a overcast of yellow on the head there, like over the the brownish color. P town. <laughs> ah. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's see. Sarah said she sent a picture too, so let's take a look here. Uh, 
Let's take a look. Oh, super cool. Joe's a Pomona native. Huh. Huh. All right. Let's see here. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. Drop your phone. I did. <laughs> this is the, she said, this is the platinum morph that we have. Very cool looking. I like the little white socks on the front there. Oh, yeah. So that's a platinum. Interesting. Kind of has an evil look to its face. Like it's looking at you sideways. Like, what are you looking at? Do you still hear the lambs crying? <laughs> 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 yeah, those, those socks are kind of cool. I like that. Uh, side eye, yeah. Stink eye slash side eye. Put some horns up here. Look like a little dragon. <laughs> yeah. Ice cream dog. I was going to get one of those. Nice. Very nice, Sarah. Bombastic side eye. That's right. <laughs> that's what I like about you guys. Come up with some pretty interesting names. So yeah, I, I, I stick with the normal stuff. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Land shark. Land shark. Larry Sheldon. You know, I, I stick with the normal stuff. <laughs> Mine don't even have names, so. <laughs> you know, I found I it easier than to, to assign a number. Well, when you have numbers of geckos, it's easier to assign the sire a name. And then because obviously you have more girls, at least I do, than um, <laughs> males. So I name my males and my girls get numbers. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I may I may start naming them. It's early enough in the process that because maybe you know because with a name at least you can you can remember the traits of that animal exactly. You know, like, so if you just instead of having to write all the traits down, you can just say you know Lucy or whatever you know, yeah. and you know it's yeah. a Murphy pattern list. Blah blah blah. You know. Yeah, like my black night male. His name is Jay Z. You know so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or just his main, ye, his ye. main squeeze is Beyonce. You know, it's all good. Um, so <laughs> Oprah's in there too, believe it or not. Um, oh, and, <laughs> but yeah, it's so easy just to go. Oh yeah, that's such and such, and and then I could rattle off, you know, the history behind that. So yeah. for me, it's easier. Let's see. Surfside said I sent you some. What? Like pictures? You sent pictures? Did you do it just now? Males get letters, that's females good. get numbers. Yeah, that's a great idea too. Especially when you're ID and babies, you know. Definitely. Like all my boxes when I mark them when they're hatched, it's got mama's number, it's got their birth date, it's got dad's name. So you can easily keep track and, uh, you know, what morph mama is if I did a cross <laughs> or, you know, it may not be like a pure, a pure breeding, but um, yeah, for sure. That's a good idea too, Norm. All right. These are, these are Jennifer's pictures she just sent. Um, she says she has Disney theme, uh, Simba, Nala, Pebble, Bam Bam, and so on. Land before time names. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I think I might, what I might do is like 
either do sitcom kind of names and stuff like that because that way I can remember the characters' names in the sitcom. So if I go to pair, you know, like Jerry with, you know, Elizabeth or whatever, you know, just kind of anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're when you're governing a pedigree, it's it makes it so much easier that way. Hey, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll start making certificates like for like horse breeders and stuff have or like the kennel club has and have this real yeah. big long fancy name like this is this is my gecko's kennel name <laughs> yeah, registered exactly. name it's the rack system name <laughs> <laughs> yeah. land shark the one that shall not be named exactly you know if we ever come to it and we could finally wrap ourselves around you know working towards having a gecko alliance there's no reason why you could not conform um a registry yeah and, and that's exactly i i kind of joke about it but i'm also serious about it you know and yeah. uh i just think that would put a little more legitimacy to what we're doing and it would also make hopefully make people hold themselves to higher standards too and um that's what i mean i always toy with it in the back of my mind if we had a like a, um, gosh, we call it the mother club, you know, for French bulldogs, which is the French bulldog club of America. If we had a club or registry, uh, where people can come together, um, you know, in legitimacy, you know, produce pedigrees and produce, um, you know, for ethics, code of ethics, Yes. Um, yeah. which is so important to be a part of something where you are an ethical breeder. You know, people have, have toured your facility. They could say, yes, you, you conform to the, the standard of husbandry. You conform to the standard of reproduction and, and everything that attributes to that. Um, I think that mm -hmm. is a good possibility for the future. It's all according to what other breeders would want to do and if they would be willing to conform to something like that. You know, um, I think it, it, it would show legitimacy of really what we do instead right. of being, you know, the backyard um, gecko breeder, so to speak, you know, putting, you know, pet smart baby, <laughs> with pet smart baby and making more <laughs> pet smart, you know, um, little, you know, no, I, I really do think by morph, <laughs> you <Yes>. know? <laughs> so I don't know. I, I really think that there is a, there's a need for it. We're coming to that point where we need to discriminate ourselves compared to, you know, just the everyday, um, right. yep breeder absolutely Sorry, went on a tangent <laughs> that's mm -hmm. okay joe just sent me a a little logo that had diablo garcia it's <laughs> that's pretty good um so again jennifer's pictures um animal number one i think there's three pictures sweet Animal number two. Very cute. I like the green. I like the little eyeballs in the background there. It's aliens. <laughs> oh, and the little babies. This one's pretty bright. Holy cow. It just it, it's just a, a very cool thing to see. Babies, especially. I, I know I talk about this all the time, but I mean, if you look at these animals together and you look at this one, look at how like the fluorescent yellow on the nose there. This one is black, but has little fluorescent highlights on the eyes and the tip of the nose. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's just pretty, pretty dang cool. So thank you, Jennifer. Appreciate it. So wait. Um, so in parting, do you guys have any thinking about talking about any questions or any um, 
concerns, whatever. I mean, anything happened this week that you want to talk about or whatever? Um, any significant hatchings you had maybe? Um, so throw it out there if you do. You know, we try to leave the end of the show for stuff like that, but um what was i gonna say i I had something else in the back of my head but anyway uh so if you guys don't next week we have um scott noble from noble family geckos is going to be on and then if i ever hear back from the guys and gals that ship your reptiles they they should be on at some point and uh well, they'll probably be busy these next couple of weekends for sure. That's what I figured. So um, yeah. I haven't really been pushing it. So yeah, and, um, and it's a busy. Sarah said six babies this week. That's cool. Um, you know, so outside of Scott, then we have Matt coming up. Yeah, Matt's Ron. the fourth of September. And then you have Ron coming in in September too. Sometime in September, yeah, we have to confirm the actual date. But yeah. uh, they're tra they're traveling in August, so they're going to be unavailable all August. Sure. Um, well, I'm glad you look forward to Friday nights already. I appreciate it. We both appreciate it, I should say. Um, Lonnie uh, says parent picks. Wait a minute here. Yes, don't forget to like and share. The old the old YouTube won't notice videos unless people are interacting with them. So if you if we have the trifecta where you're commenting, you're liking, you're subscribing, you're sharing. That's more than three, but I like saying trifecta. So YouTube will start throwing them out there um, into people's feeds and that kind of stuff, as opposed to just being found haphazardly um right did take a step in in a major direction towards this new platform i've kind of been alluding to over the last couple of weeks uh, i had a meeting a virtual meeting with the developers this morning um had to be early this morning because they're in india so their time they're obviously it was, it was way later for them and uh but it looks like this company, these these group of developers, um, they have the they have the goods. They have the ability to do what I'm envisioning. So right. I'm really excited. I don't know how much this is going to cost yet. So they're going to give me a proposal sometime this week, and depending on how much that what that looks like, uh, may determine when it kind of goes into the alpha testing phase and that kind of stuff because may have to do a little crowdfunding kind of thing for that um it just depends on the cost because this is it is it literally is a major endeavor this is like if it's done right and if it's what i'm envisioning it will be the next generation it will be the next evolution of experiences on the web for reptile keepers um and breeders and um community it, it'll 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 hopefully it'll just blow people away like i'm already blown away just by the concept and all the things that will be implemented in it and it will be accessible to everybody so you don't have to be a gamer to have a really super powerful computer to access it that kind of thing it'll be a web uh, browser-based type experience so um but that's coming down the pike um and i'm not doing this to directly compete with anybody so if if, if you like morph market or fauna classifieds or whatever this is this is not to try to necessarily draw people away from that this is just something i have a vision for and i'm very passionate about and i just i feel like our community is lacking the components that will be in this particular site so um outside of that uh, is there any shows coming up that you know of besides the pomona and the, or the, uh, the ones we've already mentioned those are the big ones that i know of um in my area i think they're gonna charleston's coming up um you know i don't keep tabs with the uh the cincinnati um 
or the all Ohio, but I know those are, you know, they're on once a month. So yeah, Daytona, we mentioned Joe. <laughs> yeah. Daytona. Um, we have a local one here in Cleveland in Medina here. That's Sunday. Yeah. So that, I'll, I'll go to that just to hang out with some old friends and stuff. And, uh, look at some animals that I have no desire to buy and right. But it's more, again, more of a, just I'll pay five bucks to visit with some friends that I see once a month sure. you know, <laughs> kind of thing. And, I'm kind uh, of sad that I'm not going to Daytona that I decided not to, to go. I was sad. I lost my money for my table, but I'm, I think I'm, I'm a little bit more sad because I won't, be able to see all my friends and whatnot but um you know heck of a long drive going by myself yeah yeah i just can't do 18 hours of driving one way by myself and everything else that goes along with that so kind of sad about that but that's okay yeah i used to go every year too and i stopped going about seven years ago um because a lot of the people that I just don't know as many people as I used to there, especially when I was living in Florida. But actually, yeah. a lot of people that I knew weren't even from Florida. Like they were coming from New York and Chicago and Wisconsin and other places. Yeah. And, uh, I'm so looking forward to seeing my friends I haven't seen in so long in Daytona. But you know, it is what it is. It's just not feasible for for one person to do that trip and to be able to be, you know, at my best to sell right. for two days, you know, it's just, it's not feasible, but maybe, maybe another time. Yeah. Yep. So, all right, gang, another great episode, Denise, thank you. And, uh, all of you in the chat, great chat today. You guys had some, <coughs> excuse me, great input, great, um, uh, great feedback and, Let's continue to grow this, and um, I, I'm always forgetting something, or I feel like I'm forgetting something. But <coughs> anyway, until next week, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and um, remember to keep calm and her harder. Until then, talk to you later. <laughs> Did you just do a Spock thing? <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>